Well, it's time to bring it on with the email questions that you've submitted to us. And this first one comes to us, Pat, from Terry, who says, how do you truly forgive someone who's done a wrong against you when the thought of that wrong keeps coming back? My family hurt me, and I know I have to forgive them, but the things they did come back into my mind and disrupt my thinking and my healing. I want to forgive completely, so God will forgive me completely. How can I do that? All right. Think of what you did to God. Uh, the great commandment, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and thy mind and the soul and strength, uh, you haven't done that, so you've broken the greatest commandment. You've insulted God along the way. And God says, yeah, I'll forgive you. So you focus on his forgiveness for you, <clears throat> and you've got to get your mind off this other stuff. Where do you put your mind? Focus in on Jesus, on what he's done. Read the Word. Let the Word come into your mind. Mm -hmm. What comes into your mind is, is the, uh, whatever your family did to you 10 years ago. That's over. That's over. And so just like your sins are over, thank God. Spend your time worshiping God and thanking him for forgiving you. And then you'll find it easy to forgive somebody else. But, if, you know, the Bible says if you don't forgive them, God's not going to forgive you. It's just the way it is. And, you know, you talk about changing habits and the way we think is a habit, really. Yes. So if you have those positive <clears throat> scripture confessions ready, Every then take day. every thought captive and Amen. say those things. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Pat, this is Sandy who says, in <clears throat> Revelations 22, 15, it says anyone who loves and practices a lie will not enter the gates of heaven. Long story short, my husband of 41 years is not my son's biological father, but my son's birth certificate carries his name, a decision we made as dumb teenagers. All these years, my husband and I have had mixed feelings about telling our son, who's now 40 years old, the identity of his biological father. We don't want to hurt our son if we don't have to. My husband doesn't feel our not telling him will keep me out of heaven because I've confessed my sin to the Lord and have been forgiven. But I'm still struggling with this lie. Pat, do you think the scripture means if I do not tell our son and daughters the truth about my son's conception, I'm going to miss out on eternity with Christ and my loved ones and instead spend eternity in hell? No way. I think that scripture has to do with people who are habitual liars. They love and practice lying. You made a mistake. You had sex with another man, bore a child, then you got married to someone else. and. The child grew up thinking that man is his father. And in truth, he is he his, is father. his father. father. For 40 <laughs> years, he's been his father. He's cared for him, supported him, educated him, loved him. Now, on the other hand, that mystery man may carry some recessive genes that will show up that will hurt your son. So I think the time has come now. He's 40 years old. He's old enough to say, listen, we've raised you. You're mine. But I want you to know that biology, you know. For health reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for health reasons. You've got to tell him. Uh, uh, but I, no, you're not going to miss out on him. You, you don't love lies. Uh, there was one thing in there. You made a mistake. And in a sense, uh, for the love of your son, you, you did something. So, hey. God forgives you. He loves you. Okay. This is Audrey who says, My husband and I are in our 80s and have been tithing for many years. We both love the Lord and give willingly, and our tithe is over 10%. I praise Him and thank Him for our blessings. I declare that this is our time of prosperity, but we never have an extra money after our monthly bills are paid. Our old car just broke down and we had to borrow money to fix it. We both need dental work, but we can't afford it. I constantly have to use our credit card to pay for medical needs. I speak the verse about, quote, give and it will be given to you. We have no unforgiveness in our lives. What could we be doing wrong? Well, I, why don't you ask God to show you some ways of making money? You know, there, there's, there are many ways of making money, even at 80 years old. Uh, you know, you can get on the telephone and people are hiring. Uh, there are all kinds of things you can do. Uh, think of ways, I mean, for example, you may have a bunch of junk lying around in your garage that you can uh, sell on eBay and get some money. I mean, there are many, many ways of making money. And um, you're, you, you're, you're looking at the downside of all the bills you've got. And, and instead of saying, God, uh, now I've been faithful to you, now I, I claim my blessing, and I ask you to open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing. Show me what you're going to do. Show me how I can move into blessings. So just ask him, and he'll give you some concepts. Your mind will open up. 
All right. This is Daryl Pat who says, my girlfriend and I have been together for 11 years and want to be married. I am divorced, but she cannot do so as we and the courts are unable to find her husband. What are your thoughts if we decide to marry in the eyes of God without the involvement of state and federal governments? Well, I think that's foolish, but I think what you can do is go to court and uh, get a, 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 a declaratory judgment, get, get a judgment of the court that your husband is missing and cannot be found, and you have affidavits to that effect. And I, I think uh, you could uh, declare him a missing person or dead or whatever. And that's obviously what's happened. I mean, he's like dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what you need to do. I mean, do it legally. You, make sure yeah, it's you, all. you may have to get a lawyer to help you on that, uh, but it shouldn't be a big deal because he's been gone now and missing. And as far as you're concerned, he is—he's dead. He's, you don't know where he is. He's, he cannot be found. So, get a declaration of that thing, and, and then it says that you're free, and then you go get married. All right. Okay, this is Larry who says, Pat, I believe there's no such thing as a fiscal conservative in Washington. Neither party has the will or the desire to balance the budget. Money and lobbyists fuel the present system we have in Washington. Except for a move of God, I believe that America's doomed. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. Listen, God loves America, and as long as America is bringing the gospel to the world, and God's spirit is moving throughout the world, then he's going to sustain America despite all the screw-ups in Washington and state government and so forth. But our hope is in the Lord, and uh, I, I do believe we need revival, and it could be that judgment is coming on us because we're doing some really bad stuff. So, uh, but I, I think what we need to do is pray for revival, a great spiritual turning to God, and to ask for God's mercy. But. I really believe as long as America, as, as, as Christians are bringing the Word of God, bringing the gospel to the world, bringing uh, humanitarian aid to the world, God's going to spare this nation. Mm -hmm. All right? Well, that's all the time we have for today, but we thank you for your questions. We always love hearing from you.